Thank you for joining me. I'm Juan, lead trader and founder of Prosperity Trade. In this video, I want to discuss SMLR. Was I wrong on this? Am I alone? You're going to want to watch this video. A few months ago here, July 25th, July 24th, I did a video on SMLR. It was a 20 minute video. It was based off of a lot of research. I spent the previous week and a half just researching the company, read their financials for the last three years, called someone from investor relations and actually really understood what they do, their product and how it's going to fit in in the medical world and was extremely bullish just based off their product, based off their financials, their revenue was growing, they had great control of their debt. They didn't seem like an overvalued company. And we got in here and it spiked up 34% over the next three months. And there was a massive crash because they missed revenue earning. Analysts were expected, were used to a certain amount of growth every quarter, and they missed those that growth estimates by like a million dollars, and it just crashed after that. So when it crashed, I didn't see anything that was major concerning that changed fundamentally. And I felt like, oh, this overreaction and it's an opportunity to buy a stock that should be invested in. I felt like I was bullish on the stock. So I told Tom Nash and we did a video together. So what this company does, and there's a great article here on Monthly Fool that just came out and it addresses this big drop, 25%. And they kind of summarize what this company does, basically uh, what they call PAD or peripheral artery disease. The issue with this, it's not something that is difficult to test. And I'll go over some of the comments. It's not something that's extremely difficult to test or extremely expensive. The problem is you can go to your doctor and be asymptomatic, meaning have no symptoms and they can miss PAD. You can still have PAD. Now, if they do suspect that you have PAD, they have to send you to a technician. So what they do here um, SMLR, they have a device where you can, the same way you, you measure your, your oxygen saturation, you put it on your finger, you put it on your toes, and it can tell you if there's an occlusion or not. Real quick, real simple. And I felt like that is going to help large group of people. See right here, PAD is underdiagnosed because 75% of patients are asymptomatic. And considering that ABI needs a referral to get tested, it can be incredibly hard for PAD sufferers to get a referral to get tested. That's where I was bullish. I felt like they have an edge. This is just simple. It's cheap. It's a quick test. In my video, I break down everything. It's a long video and you can find it here. The reason I talk about Am I Alone? Uh, because when I did the video with Tom Nash, you know, this was the first time I was on a large platform. I have a small channel, about 2,300 subscribers. This video got 1,600 views, but it's all positive comments. So I'm not used to the large exposure and you get a mixture of positivity and you get a mixture of hate. So I just wanted to, you know, I, you start to doubt yourself naturally and it's just, it just happens, especially, and it doesn't help that Right after I made this video, it crashed even a little bit more. And I, I really wasn't expecting this crash. I thought that, you know, this zone in here, it was going to get bought up if it ever touched anywhere in the zone, but it crashed and, you know, it went lower than I expected. So you, of course you doubt yourself. I want to show here, I did a video on HPQ and this is the type of positive interaction that I'm used to. So this person asked me something about my discount rate and 10% and fair value and how I came up with my DCF. And they mentioned how they come up with their fair value. And we just shared ideas. And at the end, I got you. Thanks for the insight. Very helpful. My pleasure. He had a question about my DCF. I answered the question. And he asked me a couple other questions. We went back and forth. And it was all positive And we learned from each other. And I always leave that door open where I can learn from anyone. This is the video I did with Tom Nash. We discussed SMLR and I have to admit it's longer than most of his videos, 18 minutes. And it's because I, I couldn't stop talking. I was just nervous and I didn't think about like just the whole YouTube type of vibe where you should summarize, don't repeat yourself. And I repeated myself so many times. So that was the first thing, you know, it's, it's a learning process and you know, that it's something I have to get used to. So 35,000 views, that's like 15 of my videos altogether. So it's a whole different type of exposure. And I want to just go over, there was a lot of positive feedback, but there's also 
some harsh negative feedback. And I just never understood how you can say something and just be okay, you know, and sleep at night and not think that, hey, you know, this is a human being. They're not out here trying to give people wrong information. I researched this company for weeks. I talked to someone from investor relation. I did my best. And, that, and with that, I can still be wrong. But like, like hundreds of thousands of analysts, they, same thing. They can be wrong. Anybody can be wrong. So this guy, Peter Rant, never get this guy on the show again. We've established that SMLR scientific currently trades on a much higher than expected PE ratio. That's an honest critique. It does have a high PE ratio. And, you know, I just felt like, okay, yeah, it's a high PE ratio. But I looked at other things. I looked at revenue. I looked at their finances. I looked at what they're going to be doing in the future and the potential that they have. And I was willing to pay for the PE ratio. And that's just me. You can disagree, but like never get this guy on the show again. I mean, that's, that's a little harsh, you know, and I did reply, appreciate your opinion. And usually you will find high PE ratios for growth stocks. So that was, that was the first thing. And then this one, um, Tom, I usually love your videos. I bought this one because I didn't consider how little volume the stock gets. Rewatching the video, you don't even, you're not even comfortable in this video. He replied, Tom Nash replied, I was interviewing Juan about it. Tom Nash actually replied, I actually like the stock. I think they got the right fundamentals. What's wrong with this stock? Still falling and falling. That's an honest concern. You know, it's falling and, you know, I, I don't see any reason for it to fall. I feel like it's still positive. I'm still bullish on it. I disagree. I've, I was a nurse for five years. This is a company looking for a diagnose to sell a product. This diagnosis is not accurate. If you eat poorly, live a crap life simple, you can fix PAD. This is like selling a pill. Uh, and see, so like sometimes like comments like this, it doesn't really concern me. I just wish like if you're going to put a comment, do some research. Like number one, this company does not treat PAD. And that's right. You know, if anybody lives a healthy lifestyle, uh, for the most part, I mean, you, you can still live healthy and you still can be diagnosed with certain diseases due to genetics. But this person's correct. If you live a healthy lifestyle, you may not have PAD. But this company is not looking to treat PAD. You know, if this was the case, then you can say that about any pharmaceutical company selling high blood pressure medication, selling diabetes medication. I mean, this, this makes no sense. We're talking about people that aren't diagnosed for PAD and it, because they're asymptomatic and trying to narrow that number, that 75% of the people that have PAD aren't diagnosed. We're trying to, they're trying to reduce this number. The millions of Americans, if they got healthy and everybody became super duper healthy, then maybe diabetes will disappear and high blood pressure disappears. So this, this just like this point, it, it doesn't make no sense to me that, that this person just should do a little bit more research. Sounds like a great stock, sadly for me. Okay. Uh, and this person in the UE, we have a uh, ABI system, which costs about 2,800 in my area. Nothing complicated training a few hours ran by a nurse. We know this. Yeah. It's $2,800 to do the original ABI test. It's not complicated, right? But it has to be ran by a nurse or a technician because there's an ultrasound and you have to have a referral. Yeah. This is the obvious. We know this in my video. I talk about this. So that's where this company came in with this unique product. That's going to help solve this problem. That's why I was bullish on it. And this guy, Adam, don't think either of you have a clue what PAD is, how it's treated and managed. ABPI is not specialized or expensive test to undertake. Well, I, I mean, I've been in healthcare for over 15 years. I think I do know what PAD is. And this is just a terrible assumption. I, you can watch my video. I easily describe what PAD is. Not it's not super complicated to understand the disease, how it's treated, how it's managed. I do know how it's treated and I do know how it's managed, but this has nothing to do with the product that I'm talking about. The product that I'm talking about is diagnosing PAD because 75% of the people that have PAD are undiagnosed. They're, they're missed. There are easier ways and cheaper ways to diagnose PAD, which utilizes blood pressure cuffs. And this is the same thing. There's not an easier way and there's not a cheaper, cheaper way than the quantum flow. The alternative is the ABI, which is the blood pressure cuffs. And it's about $2,800 and you have to get a referral and you have to get a specialist as opposed to this company. All you have to do is put a sensor on your finger and a sensor on your toes. But this guy knows his medicine, quite impressed. So I think those were the only 
negative ones, and it's only a few. Uh, this guy here pushing an OTC stock. It's not an OTC stock. Pump and dump. Uh, it, it's not a pump and dump because obviously it, it dropped here. You know, so if it was a pump and dump when we made the video here, it would have pumped. With Tom's 35,000 views, it's not going to pump the stock. I don't have any incentive to pump and dump a stock. I mean, it's just not worth it. I'm not struggling for cash like that. So you see these comments and you start to doubt yourself, but right after the big crash uh, or the dump, the sell-off, a couple days later, you know, big investors are, are buying the stock. So this management group, they bought SMLR when they saw the dip. So they see something in the company. I, I'm not the only one that sees something positive in this company. There's another company, Punch and Associates, they see the dip, they bought SMLR. And again, it's, you know, on stock twits, there's a lot of people talking about it and buying and saying it's a good price, but I don't base my research off of what other people say or industries or groups that are buying it. But it does feel good to know that you saw this company like three, four months ago, or I mean, I actually saw this company like seven months ago and then, you know, returned to it, made a video. And there wasn't a lot of talk. This company wasn't popular and it went up 30%. And it just crashed, and I feel like it was an overreaction, and I'm still bullish. And you know, the, um, to see other institutions buying the stock up when they see the dip, it makes you feel good. Okay, at least I'm not alone. And and you know, I guess that's just the YouTube life. I can always make mistakes. I can always be positive about something and still be wrong. It's just how it is. You know, you can't get around it. I'm open to criticism. I'm open to feedback, whether it's positive or negative, as long as we're all respectful from each other because we can all learn from each other. Maybe I've been doing something wrong my whole career and you know, you, you point that out and I'm going to be grateful to you, but you know, there's a way to be respectful to each other. I guess this is my first lesson of exposure, you know, on a large platform. I guess I'm just used to my few hundred views and the positive feedback and, and some of the feedback is from, from my kids or my own family. So it's always going to be positive. You know, just wanted to share that. I'm still bullish. Nothing's changed. Still like the company i like the technology and i think they're going to be around and i think they're going to grow and i think they're going to expand and as they expand their marketing team and go into other hospitals i think it's going to be well received because it's insurance friendly doctor friendly quick easy and it can be used anywhere that was my video please subscribe comment and like see you on the next video thank you